A trader recently reached out to us, feeling stuck and uncertain about how to progress in his trading journey. He has entered 82 trades in his journal, but he is struggling to make sense of the data. He is unsure where his trading edge lies, what adjustments he should make or how to refine his strategy to improve. So in this video we are going to dive into his journal, break down the key elements and provide some actionable advice to help him get back on track. Let's see how we can help him move forward. At first when we go to the equity graph we can see that his results are all over the place and currently he is just barely above break even. But of course this is far from ideal and it is not consistent at all. But the good news is that there seem to be some profitable trades in here and maybe we can help him find some edge. The first thing I noticed is when we go to our chart lab and then to the performance by setup is we see he has 20 setups in his journal. And this is very similar to the last journal review we did with very, very similar outcomes. And what we have seen now time and again is that when a trader has that many setups, often there's a lot of noise in the system. The trader doesn't fully understand where he currently is. And having so many setups introduces a lot of issues for traders. Typically setups follow different rules and criteria and you're looking for different signals and every setup requires a little bit of a different approach to chart preparation, monitoring, staying on different time frames, using different tools and indicators and signals. And when you're trying to juggle 20 different setups with different criteria, rules and processes, this can easily lead to a lot of noise. It can feel overwhelming probably. Traders are more likely to miss trades. Traders are likely not preparing their charts optimally for all the different setups. And then what happens is that they are chasing trades, they are over trading, they're missing trades. And that is very frustrating. What we see here is that there are two setups that stand out. And I'm only looking for setups that have a good amount of sample size. Here this setup has 12 trades and this setup 11 trades. Those are the setups with the most amount of trades in this journal. Although 12 and 11 is not the greatest sample size, it's the best sample size that we have for this trading journal. And therefore my recommendation would be to focus on those two setups exclusively right now and don't trade any other setup, at least for a few months and see what you can learn about the setups. My guess based on what we have seen here so many times now is that by focusing on two setups, you'll be able to understand them much better. You'll be able to prepare your charts better. Your scanning routine will be better. You're not going to miss that many setups. You're not going to be confused by juggling so many different criteria in your mind. And it's going to be just streamlined, more easier for you to deal with the trading. And you're probably also going to save a lot of time by only focusing on two setups instead of 20. So that's the first major thing I found. Another very interesting thing I found, and I don't have a full explanation, but I have a thesis, is that when we go to the performance by time, we see that Monday and Tuesday are his best performing days. And after Monday, he is just losing money on Wednesday and Friday, and Thursday is roughly a break even day. And because I've looked into his trades in the journal, and he has notes for pretty much all of his trades, is that I'm seeing a lot of frustration in the notes. There's a lot of negative self-talk. He also refers often in his notes to greed and over-trading. And my assumption and my thesis would be that on Monday and Tuesday, when he's feeling refreshed from the weekend, maybe had some time off the charts and was able to just gain a new perspective and refresh and recharge his batteries, he's feeling great. But then as the trading mistakes accumulate, as he's making more mistakes, as he's engaging in this negative self-talk, his mental capacity and his mindset is just deteriorating and he is then not able to trade at his best anymore. And then as the week goes on, his results become worse and worse and then it's a downward spiral. I haven't talked to the trader and I don't know if this is the case, but this would be my assumption based on what I see here and also by looking at his journal notes, which are really insightful. The next thing I noticed is when we go to the performance by instrument, he has one instrument's Roku where he has entered 21 trades. And because the trader has just entered 82 trades in his total journal, this is 25% of all of the trades are on Roku. 
which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you can see it's significantly underperforming. And more importantly, when I go to the diary and then open up the notebook, he has a dedicated note on Roku. I have to blur the last part here for obvious reasons, but uh, number four is really insightful. And he wrote, I mostly lose on Roku, but when I'm right, I win big, which is why it's so hard for me to let go. And this is not ideal. This shows a little bit of a gambling mentality and he is not able to let go and he is developing kind of a toxic relationship with his instrument. I've seen this many times that traders have this one instrument where they have this love-hate relationship and they just can't let go of it. And in this case, I would definitely recommend to the trader to let go of Roku. Don't trade this instrument for a few weeks or a month. Really step back. This should give you a big improvement on your mental mindset and on your trading psychology in general. Because it seems like that when you are engaging with Roku, you are taking this way too personal and the market doesn't care about your personal thoughts, but you are taking this way too personal. And based on the note, it's a little bit of a gambling attitude, which is something that you have to avoid. My guess would be that once you stop trading Roku, once you streamline the process and only focus on two setups, you should see a big improvement on how you feel about your trading in general. It should feel much more fun again. And also you will not feel as overwhelmed as with your current approach based on the notes and based on the data that I'm seeing here. I want to come back to the notes and I found this super interesting going through this trader's notes. I focused mostly on the trades where he has a red tilt meter and I pulled up notes randomly. After going through many of his notes, you are able to see a pattern. And sometimes those notes are just short, but there are other notes where he is really on tilt and he is talking down on himself. He says a lot of his negative self-talk. And that is something that you cannot find through data only. Of course, analyzing data is really helpful and you will often be able to spot patterns. But the self-talk is so interesting in many, many cases once you start seeing patterns. And here it still looks okay overall. Don't see any big issues, but there are notes in here, believe me, that are not great. And you can really feel the frustration. You feel the anger. You feel also the, the lost hope of this trader because he is really not engaging in good self-talk. And this would be a very big recommendation for other traders who are using Edgewonk or who are just journaling their trades in some way, is to also write down a few words here and there about your trades. Try to just capture your thoughts. Try to capture your thoughts when the memories are fresh, when you're ending your trading day. After going back a few weeks or months afterwards, then you will often find really, really interesting insights based on your personal notes. So that is a very, very great example here of how the journal notes will reveal things that your data doesn't show necessarily. Another recommendation for the traders, when we go to the trade comments, you can see we have roughly 20 entry comments, 20 exit comments, and a lot of trade management comments. As I've said in the last review, where you have a very similar picture of too many comments, is that you don't get a conclusive picture here out of the data. And you'll see that most of the comments just have a handful of trades assigned to it. Also, those are not really qualitative. They just describe what happened. But for the entry, exit and trade management comments, I would really recommend to focus on qualitative things, things that stand out in your execution. For example, you could have trade comments for an entry that is entry is too late. Entry is too early. I broke my rules. I revenge traded or it's a perfect setup and a perfect entry. And those insights will show you very, very quickly where your big problems are. I saw many times in the notes that he's talking about greed and over trading, but this is not what you find here in the trade entry comments. And it would be so helpful to attach a number to his comments. How much is he losing based on over trading, on revenge trading? How often is he losing money and how much is it costing him because he's entering a little bit too early or a little bit too late? That would be so, so helpful to understand and to see here. 
also what we have seen is that having so many different comments, you're very often not able to really identify which comment now should be attached to an individual trade. And then your choice might be not optimal. And then this will distort the data a little bit later. So another tip is to focus on fewer comments here, and this should help improve your data quality a lot as well. And that's really it for the trader. I think those are the most important insights. Focus on fewer setups to streamline the process. Avoid Roku to get out of your toxic relationship with your, tr uh, with your instrument. See how this can impact your Mondays and Tuesday and try to understand why you see such a big difference in early week trading and then late week trading. And also my recommendation is to be a little bit more positive in your self-talk. It's great and it's super helpful to have those notes on all of your trades, but talking down on yourself and engaging in negative self-talk is going to lead to more frustration. So try to improve that a little bit, but keep the notes up. And I would be really interested to hear how this is going to help you in your trading after you take the next 20, 50 or 100 trades.